Well, mammals have got orders. Mammals have got families. Mammals have got sub-families and they also have tribes. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the order Archaeodactyla. That's a continuation of the order Archaeodactyla. The last video that we did, I asked you about the bovides. I gave you a question that was saying, what is a bovide or what is a bovid? What is a bovide or a bovid? If your answer was any hollow horned mammal or any hollow horned animal, you are 100% correct. I give you 100% for that. That's a correct answer. Any horned, hollow horned animal, that's a bovide. So we've got some, something like 75 representative in Africa. They are represented by 75 species in Africa, of which 72 of them are antelopes, and these other three, they are buffaloes, the ibex and the barbary sheep. Ibex, barbary sheep, and the buffalo, the cape buffalo, of course. 72 are um, the antelopes, any other antelopes that you can think of, the kudus and the impalas and stuff like that. Then, in the sub-region of Southern Africa, we've got 33 representatives, quite a number. Only Southern Africa, about 33 representatives, of which uh, we actually see these bovids by carrying horns on their heads. We do have some species that have got uh, females that also carry horns, and we do have some species that only males will carry some horns, and the females are hornless. So it actually differs on which animal. And when it comes to males, most of the times the horns are actually the weapon for fighting. They are designed to fight. That's when you find that all the ones that are found on the male animals are thick and they're actually strong because they are for fighting their weapons. But as for the females, it's actually uh, a design or actually like something that makes them beautiful and stuff like that. They don't normally fight using their ones because they don't fight in most cases, but they are there. We do have some species, about 43 species that we find here in Africa. Uh, the females also have horns, but these other ones, it's only the males that have got horns. So we've got uh, the smallest antelope, that is called the royal antelope, that will weigh something like one and a half kilograms. It's also an antelope and it's also a bovid because it has got horns. And we do have the blue diker. The blue diker weighs about four and a half, four and a half kilograms, that's found in uh, South Africa. The blue diker. We are going to actually break down some of these animals. We are going to just pick a few animals and we just talk about them. So the blue tiger and the royal antelopes, these are the smallest that we have. Well, the other one weighs one and a half kilograms and the blue tiger is four and a half kilograms. So the largest um, bovide that we have is a cave buffalo and the eland. The buffalo that you know and an eland, these are the largest bovides that we have. So under the family bovide, we are now going to the subfamilies the sub-families. Remember, I told you that we've got orders, we've got families, we've got sub-families, and we've got tribes. Now we are breaking down, we are going to sub-families. The first sub-family that we're going to talk about is the sub-family Cephalophine. Cephalophine, of which we've got the tribe Cephalophini. Under this tribe, we have the dikers. The blue diker and the grey diker, or the common diker. The common diker is called the grey diker and we've got the blue diker. These are the two um, families that we also have, tribes that we're going to talk about under the subfamily Cephalophine. What is a grey diker? This is a beautiful animal, small, looks very beautiful, that runs so strongly when uh, you actually um, find him wherever he lives. They actually take off at a high speed. This one is called the Silver Capra Grimia. The Sylvie Capra Grimia, this is the scientific name. I normally say, as for the scientific names, don't worry much on how I pronounce them. I will make sure that on each and every video that I make, in the description box below, I will put all the scientific names um, so that you can read and pronounce for yourself and understand. So this one, the Sylvie Capra Grimia, is a browser that browses on the leaves, on the shrubs, the pods, the fruits, the mushrooms. And sometimes we have some records whereby it was found feeding on the caterpillars, so and also the cop coprophagy of whereby it feeds mainly on the, uh, what can I say, the bones, it feeds on whatever remains that they find. So they have like an omnivorous tendency. These are the grey diker or the common diker 
the Silvi Capra Premier. The males will weigh up to like 15 to 21 kilograms, that's an average, and the females will average to 20.7 kilograms. That shows that the females are slightly larger than the males, and their gestation period is around 191 days. It's plus or minus 191 days, uh, giving birth to only one young one, and that's throughout the year, that's all year round. They don't have a peak period when it comes to reproduction, and uh, they can live up to like 11 years in the world. These are the Grey Dica. These animals are water independent. They are normally found in the deepest forest where you won't find any water source. So they mainly find their water from the leaves that they browse and also from the tubers that they dig under the ground. They can live for a long period of time without any water up until the next rain season comes. So they are not water dependent. We normally call them the water independent animals. The Grey Dica. The Silver Capra Premier under the tribe Cephalophine. Number two, Dica number two. This one is a blue Dica. The blue Dica, the Cephalophus Monticola. Cephalophus Monticola. This is a blue Dica that actually uh, feeds mainly on fallen leaves and their fruits, as well as the flowers, the seed pods, um, some stuff that actually falls down from the trees because it is, it is a small antelope. So it depends mainly on the fallen stuff. So we normally find these animals following the baboons and the monkeys all the time. When the baboons are jumping on the trees, jumping around, they actually make some of the flowers to drop down. And then we see these uh, blue tigers picking up some stuff and feeding on them. These are the smallest antelopes that weighs something like uh, 4.9 kilograms. We have um, some like uh, weighing about four and a half. 4 kilograms and the females weigh to 5.9 kilograms as well so that's in average their gestation period is around 207 days giving birth to only one young one that's throughout the year they don't have a peak uh, season when it comes to reproduction as well so just like their sister uh, Daika the grey Daika they don't have a period of uh, reproduction it's all year round so they can live up to like 12 years so these are the two Daikas that we actually spoke about these are the two dikas that i just chose so that we can just discuss about them a dika that's a very good animal beautiful animal that i don't know if you can keep it as a pet but it's beautiful to watch you know the way it is designed the way it can run it can take off at a high speed and the short distance of about 200 meters of which when you try to chase him with the dogs you do not have any chance so these are the two dikas and we are going to make another video whereby we'll be like differentiating between these two giving the differences so that whenever you see these dikas you can simply tell which one is which another subfamily this is the family antilopini antilopini this is the subfamily antilopini that's where we've got the gazelles and the springboks so we've got quite a number of other small um, antelopes that falls under this but uh, the most common one in southern africa that's a springbok beautiful animal with the brown um, top and also the white flanks that's uh, the, the nickname for the south african rugby team the springboks so that's a beautiful animal that normally pranks and jumps around when they are feeding especially when they are full and also when they are mating they do all these gestures and stuff like that these are the springboks and the gazelles so the tribe neotrogeny that's where we've got the dwarf antelopes dwarf antelopes meaning the small antelopes what are these dwarf antelopes the real antelope one and a half kilograms we've got the sunni the steenbok the grisebok the dig dig we've got the clip springer and the oribi these are the smallest antelopes that we have in africa they fall under the tribe neotrogeny the dwarf antelopes they fall under the family Neotrogeny, the dwarf antelopes. So we'll pick just a few and we'll discuss them uh, um, in the same topic. So in the same tribe, the Neotrogeny, we are picking the clip spring. This is an Oreotragus, Oreotragus. That's the scientific name. This one sounds a bit uh, easier now to pronounce. Oreotragus, Oreotragus. That's the scientific name of a clip springer. The clip springer, this name is derived from the South African or the Afrikaans language that um, actually calls the rock the club. So the clip springer, this one, this animal jumps around the rocks all the time. So they've got a stuff under their, their, their feet that allows them to 
uh, stick on the rocks when they are jumping. You find them in the rocky mountains jumping from one rock to another without slipping and falling. So these are the clip springers. They feed mainly on the different species, like uh, seasonal species of uh, uh, shrubs and the, 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 the plants because they are browsers. They just feed on and they browse on anything that is found there seasonally. You know the, the busy antlops, the good thing about them, they also dig up the tubers. They also feed on the bugs, some of them on the bugs of other trees. So that's how they can resist the drought season. So the males can weigh up to an average of about 10 and a half kilograms and the females and to an average of about 13 kilograms. That shows that the females are slightly larger than the males. These are the clip springers and uh, their gestation period is around 215 days, around 215 days, giving birth to one young one all year round. No season, whereby we say this is the reproduction season for them. It's all year round. When they have enough food, they just give birth to one young one. And these animals can live up to like 15 years in the wild. 15 good years in the wild. They are so beautiful. If you look at their coat, the fur and the stuff, they are actually beautiful and they blend very well with their environment and their habitat especially the rocks when they stand closer to the rock you can't even identify them you can't even see them very beautiful animals the next one is a steenbok the next one is a steenbok the rapiceras campestris rapiceras campestris this one is a mixed feeder feeds on everything the shrubs the creepers the grasses the flowers fruits and the seed pods it's a mixed feeder. It has got a Catholic habit when it comes to feeding or when it comes to food. It doesn't choose. It feeds on vegetation matter on the ground, vegetation matter on the trees as well. So it browses and it grazes at the same time. And uh, these ones, the males can weigh up to like 10 and a half kilograms and the females 13 and a half kilograms. So still the females are larger than the males. That's how you can distinguish between the, between the male and the female. And also these small ones, these small antelopes, most of them, the females do not have horns on their heads. It's only the males that have the horns. So that's how simple you can distinguish between the male and the female antelope like these, the small ones. And then the gestation period of this uh, animal, the steenbuck, is about 168 to 173 days and giving birth to one young young one around uh, November to December over there. That's the period when they give birth to only one young one and they can live up to 10 years that's in the world. So beautiful animals, right? And uh, another one that's a Chape Scryspock. Chape Scryspock. This one is a Rapiceras Chape. That's the scientific name. Rapiceras Chape. The, Chape, the Chape's Spark. This one is a browser and it browses on high quality leaves and forbs, the shrubs and it will take some fruits and some seed pods from time to time. And this one weighs up to like 9 kgs for the males and the females are slightly smaller than the males. They weigh up to like 7 kilograms. Gestation period is only 7 months giving birth to one young one that's all year round. They can also live up to like 7 to 8 years. These are the sharp scribe spot, the Rapiceras chapelle. These falls under the tribe Neotragin. That's where we find the Glip Springer and the Steenbog. This is the Chapeis Christ Bog. Nice. If we are still making sense to you, if you are still giving the valuable information, what are you waiting for? Just hit that subscribe button and activate the bell icon so that you are notified whenever we upload a new video and you are not left behind. And please, whenever you're watching our videos, don't forget to give us a like. That makes our channel to grow. And share the channel with your friends and loved ones so that they also know what's taking place in Africa. And also, you are trying to make our channel grow. Please help us grow our channel because we want to grow up until we reach the whole world with the best information that comes from Africa. If you are taking this information from me, you are taking it from the true African. The guy was born right in the deepest dense forest of Africa. He knows everything. I've been through everything in Africa. I can teach you everything that you want to learn. Please, if you have any comments, don't forget to drop them in the comment box below and I'll make sure that I will answer and I will reply to each and every comment that you put there. If you've got questions, if you've got any contribution, anything that you want to say that will make our channel Pro, you are welcome. Please drop it in the comment box. We will make sure that we are there to reply and also to respond to each and every comment that you put there. So please, what? Don't wait any longer. Just hit that subscribe button 
and become the family.